Well, let's talk now to the Belarusian opposition leader, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, who's currently in Vilnius in Lithuania. Thank you for joining us today. Um, are you shocked by what has happened? Yeah, of course, uh, I'm shocked personally because a week ago I uh, had the same flight from Greece to Vilnius and I suppose that this could happen to me. But this happened uh, a week later with uh, our um, activist and journalist uh, Roman Protasevich. And of course, we couldn't even expect that regime uh, will endanger lives of 171 persons, just uh, international persons, just, just to kidnap one person. It does seem remarkable that such blatant, brazen action has been taken and, and even what appears to have been claims of a bomb scare on board the plane in order to bring it down. Is this a, a change of tactics from President Lukashenko? Uh, I think this is this escalation of repressions uh, in Belarus uh, is the result of impunity. Because for nine months already we are fighting against regime after fraudulent elections, and uh, uh, but regime still uh, feels impunity, and you see they uh, use such awful methods of uh, kidnapping people, uh, and um, for sure uh, we have to put much more pressure on this regime for them to stop violence and to release political prisoners. What, what sort of pressure then? Because, I mean, as I've been saying to my guests all morning, you know, international pressure in terms of sanctions and asset freezing was applied last year. It doesn't seem to have made any difference. You know, the list of sanctions uh, has to be much, much wider. Uh, for everybody to uh, think twice uh, before uh, doing any tortures uh, or... Uh, violence towards people because there were three packages of sanctions list of sanctions and um, but the list isn't rather wide it's only 80 people on the sanction list while in prisons are more uh, than thousand people so uh, uh, sanctions list has to be broader personal uh, sanctions and uh, very smart and targeted uh, sanctions on only on those state enterprises that are uh, pockets uh, of Lukashenko. In, those increased sanctions, though, will change what, in your view? I mean, are you seeing something that will force him out of office, something that will force him to have free and fair elections? He doesn't seem like the type of person who is going to back down. Look, our strategy is uh, to have negotiations with regime because we don't want any violence or blood in our country, new victims, because uh, since August, more than 35,000 people have been already detained. So we chose civilized way of solving political crisis in Belarus and we want negotiations. And to make a regime answer to our calls for negotiations uh, with the aim of solving uh, political crisis and having new new elections this fall, we have to put uh, more pressure. Do you hold out any hope of that happening at this stage? In such, in these circumstances, when uh, the whole country is uh, against a regime, it's uh, absolutely uh, unbelievable that re that regime will last long. The only question is how many victims will be uh, during this uh, fight for freedom and for democracy. So I'm, I, I'm, not, I don't believe. I'm sure that these changes will come soon. In terms of of this young man who was arrested from the plane, I mean, they've they've gone to extraordinary action to to get their hands on on this journalist. What is his fate likely to be now? Uh, now we uh, don't have access to him. A uh, lawyer is uh, already trying to uh, get him, but uh, we, we don't know the updated information at the moment. But I'm sure that he's in awful circumstances. I'm sure that he's been tortured because he knows a lot of information. He was uh, a leader of uh, one famous uh, telegram channel about uh, civil society, about the situation in Belarus. 
and he's considered to be like private enemy of uh, Lukashenko. So we're really afraid not only for his freedom, but for his life. Obviously, you're in exile currently in, in Lithuania. Do you see any hope? I mean, if you were invited back for any sort of, of, of negotiations uh, with President Lukashenko, would you go? Would you have any confidence in returning back to your own country? No, first of all, Lukashenko is not the president. He's ex-president of our country. He's lost uh, the election. But uh, I think that these negotiations should take place on neutral territory because uh, there is no uh, belief to Lukashenko anymore. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's it's safer for everyone to hold these negotiations uh, in the third country. Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.